everyone it's Doreen I miss everybody coming to church hopefully we can be together very soon bye hi I'm Glenna Wellercarchi and this is my husband Don we are looking forward to meeting you in person very soon hopefully when we get to stage three and we miss you all and welcome to our Sunday service. We would all love to be together, but we know this is the best possible way that we can we can have our services and remain safe. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Malin, Warren, and Sarah. Hi. We hope that you're all healthy and well, just like we are. We miss you all and we hope to see you soon. Stay home and stay safe. Hugs to you all. Bye. Hello. My name is the Reverend Larry Wright and I'm the minister here at Spirit West United Church. And I too would like to add my words of welcome to you who are joining us for this time of worship on Trinity Sunday. But now as we gather together, let us first turn to our heavenly humor as we see how the world looks at us and the church. Unfortunately, we missed John Punko's birthday, which was on May 31st, and Vivian's, which was on June 6th. But Liz, our scripture reader from last week, celebrates her birthday tomorrow, June 8th. Vivian also shared with us that her brother Rick, for whom we continue to pray, is in remission. And Maureen reports that Ron had his eye surgery, and in his vision continues to improve. She also acknowledges that when she is driving, his vision is very good. And Glenna, whom you saw earlier in the greetings, is now officially retired after 43 years of nursing. Let us now light our Christ candle. Loving God, in Jesus you shine before us as the light of the world. We praise you and ask you to guide our steps this day and every day. As we light this candle, may it always remind us that you are our light in darkness, our protector in danger, and our saving creator at all times. And so I invite you to share in the words that will now appear on the screen. As Spirit West United Church, we come as pilgrims on this land, and so firm 
that we are one part of God's creation, that we gather together in the traditional territory of Treaty 6 First Nations and in the traditional territory of the Métis Nation, that we must honor future generations by preserving this land. Let us join together in the call to worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Three who are one. Confusingly complicated, confoundingly simple, awesomely and always present in our lives. Thank you. For calling us to be your people. For holding us close. For setting us free for being awesomely and always present in our lives. Praise to you. Blessings and honor and glory. Holy One, Holy Three, now and always. Amen. Amen. was clear. But what was really amazing 
was in the little space in the very center of the window where the, all three colors overlapped. There was a beautiful little center of an absolutely gorgeous emerald green, a color that was unlike any of the other colors they'd ever decided. But there in the center of the window was this beautiful green, a color that was only available when all the other windows were put together. And in a sense, when we talk about God as Creator, or God as Jesus, or God as the Holy Spirit, we're trying to decide whether we want to see the world through a white window, a yellow window, or a blue window. And yet, we get the best picture, the fullest understanding of who God is, if we bring them together and see that startling color that is created when they're all combined as one. The first reading is from Letters to Churches, 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and remember, I am with you always, to the end of age. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and prayers of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. So here we are on Trinity Sunday, a Sunday that in the church here is dedicated to a theological doctrine. Now most of our special days in the church are connected with the life of Christ or with the life of the early church. So we have Easter, Christmas, Pentecost. We celebrate events that we read about in the Bible. Today we're looking at something a little different and celebrating an understanding of God that is unique to the Christian church, or at least a good part of it. And that uniqueness comes from an understanding that, and I will let you know the official words, it comes from an understanding that God is one God but three co-eternal, consubstantial persons or hypostases, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, as one God in three divine persons. The three persons are distinct, yet are one substance, essence, or nature, homoousios. Now, did that make everything clear? We even had to resort to Greek words because the English words don't quite cut it in describing what we are trying to describe. Because since the early days, the Church has wrestled with how it understands God's way 
are being shown to us. We've got no problem with God the Creator. That seems to make sense. The one omnipotent being, the Creator of all and the foundation of all. But then we have Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, who we consider more than just a nice guy or a prophet. Since the early days of the church, we have somehow considered Jesus to be in a unique relationship with God. And one way that is expressed is by calling Jesus the Son of God. And we have the stories of the Nativity that reinforce that understanding. But when our message was taken out of Palestine and taken into the Greek world, having the child of a God was not unusual. In fact, it was all too common and often the source of some confusion. Because Jesus isn't a demigod in the Greek sense, as the offspring of some sort of divine flame with a mortal. Jesus for us is much more in relationship with the presence of God. John refers to Jesus as the Word made flesh. The creative aspect of God made visible in a human person. Again, our words are beginning to fail in describing this unique relationship. And then along comes the Holy Spirit, the one promised by Jesus as he departs from his disciples at the end of his earthly ministry, after the resurrection. He tells them they will be empowered by an advocate, a spirit of truth. And at Pentecost, we see the manifestation of that in wind and flame and new abilities. And so the church has wrestled with how do we understand God? How can we combine those three ways of knowing God? The Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. How can we say God is one in three? And the Church has struggled with that. Because we want to make that broader understanding of God. A God beyond our understanding. And yet, a God whom we are able to identify, relate to, be in relationship with, because that's the real mystery that's in the Holy Trinity, that relational nature. And in the English translation of the awkward Greek word, we talk about the persons of the Trinity. It's just not job titles. It's a relationship within a being. Something that we can't really envision in our earthly understanding, but the one we have come to describe in talking about God. And the word we often use is mystery, the mystery of the Trinity. Now, mystery originally didn't mean a crime novel or a puzzle to be solved. A mystery was something that was and is, but in many ways is beyond our full understanding. 
Creation is a bit of a mystery. Oh, there have been all, sort of, all sorts of scientific explanations as to perhaps how the universe started, when it started. But one of the questions that is never answered, at least in the scientific community, is why? Why do we even exist at all? And those are the questions we come to in faith. When we look at those mysteries, those mysteries about the identity of God, about our own existence, when we turn to God, not in blind faith, but in an acceptance of a reality that is beyond our complete understanding, The first reading that Bob shared with us was from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, and it's, it's a farewell message. And he hints at that understanding of God. And in fact, he ends with a phrase that's often included in church blessings. He invites everyone to greet each other with a holy kiss. I wish that were possible these days, but it's not. But he also says, all the saints greet you, and I would share that with you. And he ends with, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, naming what we have come to understand as the Trinity. And Paul ends and the Gospel reading from Matthew, from the 28th chapter, which is, takes place just prior to Jesus' ascension, where he says to his followers, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. As we live in a world that is filled with confusion, with violence, with fear, there is much we need to hang on to, to support us and to give us the vision of what the world shall be so that we can make the changes that need to be made in ourselves and our society. And the Trinity gives us an opportunity to realize that there are some things that must be viewed from many angles that it's only when we bring the three persons of the Trinity together that we fully understand God. And in much of our world, we really need to examine the way things are so that we can truly understand where God needs us to be, whether it's in protest, whether it's in activism, whether it's in simply loving the neighbor whom no one loves. I would like to conclude this time by sharing with you from the Song of Faith, that statement of faith that was created for the United Church in 2003, as it speaks to us both of God and also speaks to us in a way of who we are and what we are called to be. With the Church, through the ages, we speak of God as one and triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We also speak of God as Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, God, Christ, and Spirit, Mother, 
friend and comforter, source of life, living word, and bond of love, and in other ways that speak faithfully of the one on whom our hearts rely, the fully shared life at the heart of the universe. Amen. I would remind you today, as I have done in the past, that we are here to pray with you and for you, and that you can send your specific prayer requests to us using addresses that you will find in the credits at the end of the video. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Let us center our hearts for prayer. Let us pray. Mighty and triune God, you are close to all in need, and by our prayers we draw close to you. Claiming your love in Christ Jesus, for the whole world we dare to pray for others. For your church and its varied ministries. Loving God, hear our prayer. And be your love answered. For the work of justice and the healing of creation. Loving God, hear our prayer. And be your love answered. For the care of strangers, neighbors, family, friends. Loving God, hear our prayer. And be your love answered. For those isolated by sickness, sorrow, violence, fear. Loving God, hear our prayer. And be your love answer. For those broken by the world. Loving God, hear our prayer. And be your love answer. For those who face death. Loving God, hear our prayer. And be your love answer. For those we name this day. Jean and Bill, Rick, Dan, Nina, Trevor, Ron, Merv, Bill W, Adina, Harold, Damianus and Rosario. For those whose lives are in danger because of the color of their skin. For those calling for and striving for the desperately needed change in those systems, structures, and institutions that perpetuate racism and discrimination. For those who continue to be affected by the COVID-19 virus, physically, mentally, spiritually, or financially. For all who are working on the front lines to fight this pandemic, for those working to develop a vaccine or treatment for the disease. Loving God, hear our prayer. And be your love answer. Generous and merciful God, accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now acknowledge before God the gifts of time, talent, and treasure that have continued to come in to support the mission and ministry of Spirit West United Church at this time. Let us pray. 
holy, holy, holy God. In calling forth from creation, from the void, revealing yourself in human flesh, and pouring forth your wisdom to guide us, you manifest your concern for your whole universe. You invite us as your people to gather the world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. Holy, holy, holy God, bless us and our offering, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. This is the table of the Lord, and we are called to this sacred feast. Let us come, not because we are strong, but because we are weak. Let us come not because of our own goodness, but because we need help and mercy. Let us come because God loves us, and in Jesus gave himself for us. The Spirit of God be with you all. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to our God. All our thanks, all our praise. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, before all that is, you were God. Outside all we know, you are God. After all is finished, you will be God. Archangels sound the trumpets, angels teach us their song, and saints put us into your presence. And this is our song. Holy, holy, holy God, our life, our mercy, our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Save us, we pray, you beyond all. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Save us, we pray, you beyond all. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, you beyond the galaxies, you under the oceans, you inside the leaves, you pouring down rain, you opening the flowers, you feeding the insects, you giving us your image, you carrying us through the waters, you holding us in the night. You smile on Sarah and Abraham, your hand with Moses and Miriam, your words through Deborah and Isaiah. You live as Jesus among us, healing, teaching, dying, rising, inviting us all to your feast. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we remember your Son, his life with the humble, his death among the wretched, his resurrection for us all, your wisdom our guide, your justice our strength, your grace our path to rebirth. And so we cry, mercy. Mercy. And so we cry, glory. Glory. And so we cry, blessing. Blessing. Holy God, we beg for your Spirit. Enliven this bread, awaken this body. Pour us out for each other. Transfigure our minds, ignite your church. Nourish the life of the earth. Make us, while many, united. Make us, though broken, whole. Make us, despite death, alive. And so we cry, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And so the church shouts, Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And so the earth pleads, 
Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, our life, our mercy, our might, our table, our food, our server, our rainbow, our ark, our dove, our sovereign, our water, our wine, our light, our treasure, our tree, our way, our truth, our life. You, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, praise now, praise tomorrow, and praise forever. And so we cry, Amen. Amen. We gather these and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. The gifts of God for the people of God. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, that we may be united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. So, there are three announcements this week, and the first one could have gone earlier during our celebrations time, but I forgot, and so now I'm going to share it with you at this time, and that is to thank Louise and Sheila, who came to the church this past week and planted the planters and flower pots across the front of our deck. It's a wonderful sign that although the building may be quiet, 
the church is still alive. So a big thank you to Louise and Sheila. Now on Wednesday we'll be continuing our Zoom Bible study. And we'll be looking at the second chapter of Rabbi Kushner's book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. And this chapter is the story of a man named Job. And as we read this chapter, I would invite us to look at the question, why is the story of Job so important in this book? And a follow-on to the same question, what insights does Rabbi Kushner bring to that unique story? Now, if you want to join our Zoom Bible study and aren't receiving our Thursday e-messages, which contain the link, I would invite you to send an email to the church at the address in the credits, and we'll send you all you need to know to join us on Wednesday. We meet by Zoom at 1.30. And finally, there's still opportunity for you to drop underwear at the church. We still are collecting for Bissell during this time, as people still need the basics of human life. So if you want to drop off underwear, we're also, and we're also collecting cloth face masks, and a few of those have come in too. So there are collection boxes just inside the church door if you want to drop them by. Or if you have some that you want picked up, give the church a call and we'll arrange to have the stuff picked up. So that's all the announcements for this week.